You had one turn. I'm getting on time. <laughs> My daughter, uh, Casey, who was here a couple weeks ago at the school she teaches at, she texted me yesterday about one of the students at school, Chase Boyer, that his little sister, Ellie, has been having problems, and they think that she might possibly have cerebral palsy. And I had that on this, but it was behind the other list. So <laughs> if y'all will remember uh, Ellie Boyer this week, I guess her family and all doctors trying to find out what might be going on with her. Thank you. How many of you have had a sick child? Do you understand? Your Lord, we pray for Ellie, his family. Right? Thank you for Casey and her burden for her students. Lord, thank you for uh, Danny and Vicki safely coming over here from Yorktown this morning. How we praise you. Lord, may this message touch our hearts. We thank you for the word of God that's so powerful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I said to Russ and Alan Tuesday night at rehearsal, or maybe it was Thursday, I said, if Chet Atkins played one Sunday, how would you feel about playing next Sunday? Alan said, I wouldn't want to get near the place. <laughs> and I said, well, that's how I feel after Leon Benjamin preached last week, and you're back to me this week. It's a, uh, but you're stuck with me. So this is the best you got. <laughs> Appreciate you clapping on cue. You know. <laughs> the Lord said clap. No, uh, I'm not playing humble. It's just, uh, it took me to about Wednesday to want to preach. This, <laughs> this is a message I had prepared last week in case Brother Leon didn't make it. Because you never know coming down 95 if people are going to make it or not. But if you have your Bible, you need to turn to Joshua 2 and Matthew 1. <clears throat> and Hebrews 11. <laughs> if you have a pew Bible, I'll give you the numbers here. But today, we're going to continue our study in uh, Joshua. And the next page, Jackie, I believe, tells them their page number. If you're using a pew Bible right there in, in the, uh, by the hymnal, Joshua is on page 246, Matthew in 1111. When I was 16 years old, I was teaching Good News Clubs with Child Evangelism and Fellowship. No one has died. I don't know. <laughs> but we're all okay. Maybe they're dying Easter eggs, okay? <laughs> Lord bless our workers. And you say, I, I can do that. I can help with the children. Wonderful. Tell Krista. And we'll send you your form on the email. <laughs> Cindy asked me to express our appreciation to all of you for uh, the acknowledgement and pastor appreciation for your kindness. Gifts are wonderful and all that's appreciated, but the most beautiful gift is a word. And when you tell someone that you love them and you appreciate them, we need to do that more to one another. It isn't always, you know, it's easy to go buy a gift card or get, get something for somebody, but words are so powerful. And uh, we appreciate the sweet cards that we just expressed. Thank you. And uh, we are very happy here and we're thankful. Someone said, why don't you move to Roma? You have three kids and seven, almost eight grandkids over there. Because God doesn't want me in Roma. And uh, he wants me here. But we appreciate it very much. Joshua 2 is on page 246. Place a marker there and get something over in Matthew. We're talking about a woman named Rahab. I don't know anybody that's ever named their child Rahab. Or Jezebel. Actually, I do know one person named the child Jezebel. I will talk loud. Okay. Rahab sort of has a negative connotation. But let me tell you something. We're all Rahab. Because we all needed redemption. We all may not have had the sin that Rahab <clears throat> was known for. But we're all broken. We all need help. 
Rahab is mentioned also in the New Testament. But I'm going to show you two verses here. One in Matthew 1. Solomon, and by the way, you that call that fish that you eat a salmon. I don't know why you say salmon. It's got an L in it. My mama said salmon. Okay. And so I looked in the Bible, and the Bible respelling for this name is Solomon. Thank you. And so salmon or Solomon, but we're calling him Solomon, began Boaz. Okay. You say, oh, I don't read through all those. This is important. The begets and the begots were also ordained and inspired. A man named Solomon had a son named Boaz by Rahab, the mom. Boaz begat Obed <coughs> by Ruth. And then Obed begot Jesse. You say, why is that important? We'll get there. And then in Hebrews 11.31, and we're going to look at a passage. Today is really going to be a history lesson. This is not going to be a fiery evangelistic sermon. Even though I will offer the gospel and I will offer salvation. If you're here today and you don't know 100% sure that Jesus is your Savior, you came to the right place. This is a place where people will love you and will guide you to salvation. <coughs> not because of our church, but because of our Savior. But in Hebrews 11.31, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not uh, with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. This is so important that when God inspired the book of Hebrews, he included the story of Rahab. The harlot. Harlot is an Old Testament. King James word for prostitute. He said, well, that's an awkward subject at, at church. Read your Bible. God talks about sin. And he also talks about forgiveness. These two obscure passages may not mean much to us at first. She's mentioned in a long genealogy of Matthew. They begat, they begat, they begat. And then Hebrews identifies her as a sinful woman. That didn't die in some tragedy. Because she did some good deed. Whose genealogy are we talking about here? <laughs> Matthew 1. Look at it please. I'm not going to read all the begats. I can't even pronounce all these names. Not, but let's face it. They're all dead. So they don't really know how I'm pronouncing their name. Okay. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The son of David. The son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begat Judah and his brothers. Now you remember, Jacob who became Israel, the twelve tribes. Now if you know your stories, the next verse is pretty sensitive. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. That was an ancestral relationship. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. And then Matthew 1, 4, Ram begot Amenadab. Amenadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Solomon. Who is Solomon, okay? He was of the tribe of Judah. Now we got to get this history in here. Twelve sons of Jacob... One was Judah. Judah was the, an, the uh, ancestor, ancestor of Salmon. He fathered a boy named Boaz. Boaz was the kinsman redeemer of Ruth. She was the great grandmother to King David, so in the line of Christ. Now look at Matthew 5. Salmon beget Boaz by Rahab. Bo Boaz beget Obed by Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Red flag. You see, God didn't keep all the details from us. He let us know these were imperfect people, just like us. If the Bible was written about all these glowing people that were perfect, it would not be any inspiration to us because we couldn't reach up to such. 
None of us. But right here it says, David begat Solomon. When David had adultery with Bathsheba and had her husband killed and married her and their baby died, but later they had a son Solomon that God said, I will use him. Let me tell you folks, it gives me chills because God will use you and me. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Please don't sit there and think, well, I'm not like all these other folks. I'm better. I didn't do what they did. I, I know their story. I was raised here. I went to school with them. <laughs> if you have that attitude, you have the attitude of pride. Amen. Well, it'll, it'll stop eventually. <laughs> Craig, would you step outside? Because we're all going to and figure it out. It's probably my old dog getting, getting healed. But <laughs> Dear Lord, I pray the Word of God will be blessed today because I feel so distracted. <laughs> and I cause most of it. But, but remember, King... Solomon wasn't supposed to be the king. David's. Would you announce who's it is? I can't do it yet. Okay. <laughs> David's firstborn son was supposed to be the king. And Bathsheba, the wife of David. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> You mean my white card? Yeah. The red one? The red one. The red one. Well, Cindy has a key. Do you need my key? Look, if I wear tight jeans, that happens. page two and there's six of them. <laughs> okay. Get back together. You know what the devil doesn't want you to hear? That a woman who had adultery with the king fathered the next king of Israel. You say, how could God bless me? <clears throat> Same way he blesses you and me. I'm glad when the Lord wrote the Bible, He told us about certain things. If He had included you and me in the Bible, He could have said, and Rick, that lustful teenager who was trying to be a good boy but deep down inside really wanted to do a lot of bad stuff. And Rick, who thought bad things. And Rick, who said things he shouldn't have said, who is now your pastor. Forgiven. That's the theme today of redemption and forgiveness. There's not one thing we can do that God can't forgive. Amen. Does He take away the consequences? No. We all have scars on our body from different situations. I make a joke that when I got saved at 15... The front teeth I lost at age 11 by disobeying my father and falling off my bike because I was supposed to stay home, my front teeth didn't grow back. That's a consequence I've had to deal with, and my grandkids all know the story that Booga didn't obey his daddy, and I got hurt. But God still says, I'll use you. I will forgive you. I will cleanse you. I will take you and I'll put you back together. Hallelujah. As Wayne saying, nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son. Skip down to verse 15 in Matthew 1. Elud begot Eliezer. 
Eliezer begot Matan, and Matan begot Jacob. Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Now I'll tell you something, we don't hear about Mary. There's no scars against Mary. Was she perfect? No, but she was pure. She was holy. She was chosen. But Mary still had to get saved. When I taught in a Catholic school, they revered Mary as the perpetual virgin and the immaculately conceived woman who never sinned. Let me tell you, Mary was a sinner. And that's why she needed a redeemer. The family tree of Jesus through his earthly father, Joseph. That's what we just read. This family tree has a long line of sinners, adulterers, murderers, and prostitutes. So we're all safe. Because they didn't do anything we haven't done. And vice versa. Now let's look at Hebrews. We believe Paul wrote this book. It bears his style and his Jewish heritage. Rahab was a Gentile. So Jesus, the Jewish boy, had a Gentile great-great-grandmother. Why is she mentioned in Hebrews 11? In page 1381 in your pew Bible, Hebrews 11 says this. What is faith? Faith is a gift. You don't just work up faith. Redemption and repentance are a gift. You don't just decide, okay, I'm going to get saved. The Holy <coughs> Spirit has to convict you and bring you to salvation. It's not a human act. It's repentance says, I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing and I'm going to do right. I'm going to go the other way. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now stay with me. I need to read this whole passage. This, I mean, we're at church. Why don't we read the Bible? Hebrews 11.2 For by this the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand the worlds were framed. Honey, would you come on up? I'm just we understand the worlds were framed. Verse 4 By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. Verse 5 By faith Enoch was taken away so he did not see death and was not found. By Verse 6, it is impossible to please God without faith. By faith, Noah divinely warned. Then we see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Joseph, and Moses. And then look at verse 28, the Passover. Look in your Bibles. The Red Sea. Then the walls of Jericho. Ah, we haven't gotten that far in Joshua yet. We haven't gotten to the walls of Jericho. And then verse 28, he kept the Passover by faith. Verse 29, they passed through the Red Sea. Verse 30, the, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. And then we see Rahab. Verse 31, by faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she received the spies with peace. We're going to tell you a Bible story today. How do you teach children the Bible? You start by teaching, reading the Word of God and reading Bible stories to them. One of the books we raised our kids on was Edgar Meyer's Bible Stories. <clears throat> Another great one is Billy Graham's Bible Stories. And I've got Bible story books on the table here that Cindy has found at Goodwill stores. If you don't have one at your house and you have a young child there, you need to take one today. Read them the Word of God. Read them the stories. But I asked Cindy, two weeks ago, would she read this story? This is grandmommy time. We're sitting down and we're being quiet. And we have no more horns blow. And Cindy's going to read us this story. Rahab helps the spies. Across the Jordan River, several miles from the Israelites' camp was Jericho. A high wall had been built around the city to keep the enemies out. There was a gate in the wall through which the people came and went. The people of Jericho were afraid because the Israelites camped near the Jordan River. They had been hearing about the Israelites for a long time. They knew how God had led Israel out of Egypt and through the Red Sea. They heard how God helped the Israelites fight their enemies. What if Israel should cross the Jordan River and take Jericho over? The people of Jericho trembled at the thought. 
After Moses died, God told Joshua, Take the people across the Jordan River to the land I have given them. Everywhere they go, the land will be theirs. Be strong and of good courage, for I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Then Joshua told his officers, Go through the camp and tell the people to get ready, because in three days we will cross the Jordan River. In three days we will take over that land. The people gathered their belongings and prepared food for the long march. The men of the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh got ready to go with their kinsmen. While the Israelites broke up the camp, Joshua sent two men across the river to learn all they could about the city of Jericho, because Jericho was so large. Joshua believed they needed to capture it before going further. When the two spies came to Jericho, they found the gate open. In they walked. They came to a house on the wall that belonged to a woman named Rahab. While they talked to her, someone hurried to tell the king, Two men from the Israelite camp have come to spy on our land tonight. The king knew he had better not let the spies get back to their camp. At once he sent officers to Rahab's house to capture the spies. The officers told Rahab, bring us the spies that are in your house. When she did not do that, they searched the house, but they could not find the spies. Rahab had hidden the Israelites in the stalks of flax on her roof. She said to the officers, I told you the men went out the gate just before dark. If you hurry up, you can catch them. Out the gate, the officers ran. They must capture the two spies. The gates were locked as soon as the officers were gone. Now the spies could not get out of Jericho and return to their camp. Rahab told the spies, I know the Lord has given you the land. I know we cannot win against you. We have heard all the wonders God has done for you, and we are afraid. The Lord God is with you. As the spies listened, they decided it would be easy to take Jericho because the people were so afraid. But how could they get back to camp to tell Joshua? Rahab said, Promise me that when you come back to take the city, you will save me and my family. The men promised. She was to hang a red cord in her window and her family would be saved. Rahab took them to a window that opened above the wall, hide in the mountains for three days before you return to your camp. Then the officers will not find you. With a strong rope, she let the men down the wall outside the city. As soon as they were gone, she tied that red cord in her window. After three days, the spies returned safely to Joshua. They told him all that had happened. How glad Joshua was when he heard the spies say, Surely God has given us that beautiful country, for the people are afraid of us. They think they are too weak to fight against us. Thank you. I remember as a child reading this golden treasury of Bible stories, a big black book. And I remember those pictures, and they're still in my mind. To me, I don't recall my parents reading me that book, but I recall reading it myself. God forgives our sins. He takes away the punishment because Jesus suffered for our redemption. The memories still stay and the consequences cannot be removed. Rahab is mentioned in the line of Jesus, but she's always identified as Rahab, the woman who sold her body for a living. Now we're going to go to the main story of Joshua chapter 2. Page 246, if you've got a few Bible. Here's the story. And this is a long chapter, and I'm going to skip through it, because I want to get to this point about this woman. Joshua 2. Now Joshua sent out two men from the cave grove to spy. Go view the land. And they came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. Now our imagination say. <laughs> Well, did they just go there to rent a room? 
The Bible doesn't tell us anything but they found a place to lodge for the night. Verse 2, and then the king, as Cindy told you, said, go. There, it was told to the king, there's men of Jericho here. They're spying. So verse 3, the king said to Rahab, you bring those men out. Verse 4, the woman took the two men and hid them. And she said, yes, they were here, but I don't know where they were from. It happened that the gate was shut. It was dark, and the men went out. Verse 6, she brought them to the roof and hidden, had hidden them with the stalks of flax. Then the men pursued them by the road to Jordan. They went out chasing nobody. Now they lay down. She came up to them on the roof, and she said, I know that God has given you this land. Here's where Rahab is displaying faith. She said to these men, we've already heard of what's happened to the Israelites. And we know that those men, we know what God has done for you. Verse 10, you've heard how the Lord dried up the water. They heard about God's testimony. You want people to, to come to faith? Let them hear about your testimony. Let them know how you're trusting God in the middle of trials. Verse 11, look what she said. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither there remained any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Hello, she just displayed faith. <clears throat> you say, well, can a woman like that get saved? Like anybody else get saved? By faith. She said, I believe your God and I believe who you are. And he said, oh, maybe she was just trying to save her own neck and her family. You're, you better be right. That's a good reason to get saved, to save your life and save your family. She said, verse 12, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I've shown you kindness, you will show me kindness. Verse 13, she cared about her family. Look at verse 13. And spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters. Deliver us from death. And I love this phrase in 14. He said, our lives for yours. If none of you will tell this business, the Lord has given us the land, we will deal kindly with you. So she let them down by a rope. And she said, get to the mountain lest they catch you. Verse 17. We will be blameless of this oath unless you make us swear. Unless we came to the land you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through you, though you let us down through. And unless you bring your father and your mother your brothers and all your father's house to your own home. So they didn't live in her house. And they said to her, you hang this cord in the window and when we come to destroy Jericho, you and everybody in that house will be saved. Verse 19, whoever goes outside the doors in the street, his blood will be on his own hands. And look at verse 21. According to your words, so be it. She sent them away and she bound the scarlet cord. They went to the mountain and stayed there three days. They returned and descended from the mountain. And verse 24, they said to Joshua, truly, the Lord has delivered all the land in our hands. Indeed, all the inhabitants of the country are faint. Now I'm going to skip over, if you want to, to chapter 6, verse 22. Let me tell you, we're having to skip into 6 because we haven't seen the, the walls of Jericho yet. But look at 6.22. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house. And from there, bring out the woman and all she has, as we swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in, brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that were there. They brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp. And I want to remind you what Hebrews said about Rahab. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. And James 2.25, another mention of her. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers? Her faith was displayed by her actions. 
She believed. Because she believed, she knew <clears throat> she responded. Don't tell me you believe in Jesus and you're living like the devil. Don't tell me I'm trusting God. I've been baptized and you're walking away from the Lord. And by the way, I'm preaching to the choir because here you are on Sunday morning. But as folks you witness to and talk to you tell you, well, I'm just a backslider. Wait a minute. The New Testament doesn't speak of backsliders. That's an Old Testament phrase for people who had gone apostate, who had turned away from God. Let's talk about Rahab. First of all, her sin. She was identified. She never tried to gloss it over. Hey, I read one writer that said she was an innkeeper with a reputable business. <laughs> that just isn't what the Bible says about it. She wasn't working at the desk of Holiday Inn. <laughs> Number two, her scheme. She knew about God. She feared for the destruction of her city. So her motivation was self-preservation. i got to save my family. i got to save my skin and my mom and my dad and my family. Her sacrifice. She hid those spies. That was punishable by death. Had the king of Jericho known she had hidden those and lied about it, she would have been probably killed. Definitely she would have been in prison. Her sign. The red cord. And why isn't it blue? Why isn't it gold? You say, well, maybe that red cord was like a red light on the porch. All I can tell you, that red cord was a symbol of redemption. I remember teaching this story to boys and girls. And I, I gotta tell you, I really didn't know what a harlot was when I was 16. And I was just teaching this story, and we didn't talk about that part of the story as much as we talked about the lady who believed. And she hung that red cord outside her window. The Bible says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That red cord is a symbol of the blood of Jesus. Her salvation. Because of her belief, her family was rescued. Because of your belief, your family can be rescued. Your family can be saved. You say, I can't make a difference. They already know the old me. and They'll never believe. Yes, they will. They will believe the new you when you have shown redemption. And her status. I love this. I never knew this till this week. In Jewish traditional writings, she married Solomon, who was one of the spies. He thought was a Pentecostal? I don't know, children. Let's get that tambourine day. <laughs> Why would a Jewish man, a descendant of Judah, marry her? Because she changed. He saw a difference. He saw her faith. And this Jewish man, son of Judah, married Rahab, the saved woman. And they had a little baby named Solomon. Excuse me. I should stick to my notes. Boaz. Salmon and Rahab had Boaz. And remember the story of Boaz and Ruth. And we're going to study that in Bible study in a few weeks. Uh, you, for you Wednesday folks. I read this statement and I, I've just got to read it. I can't say it any better. The gratitude that Salmon felt for Rahab ripened into love. And let's face it, no doubt she was a looker. I mean, come on. She wasn't a lovely woman. But he saw more than her beauty. He saw a change in her. And he saw faith. When grace erased her former life of shame, he made her his wife. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know why that's great? Because we're all we were all there. We're all there. The ground is level at the cross. We all come to Jesus the same way. How do we apply this to our lives? Number one. I want you 
Wow, Jackie, you ain't with me, girl. Come on. Her scheme for <laughs> sacrifice. Her sacrifice. You've forgotten my cross mark. I have a fight with you, church, but you can read it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Eddie, you're going to have to have a talk with her. Right? <laughs> Look, for what you work for, I can't complain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Read it with me. Our past does not determine our future. Read it again, folks. Our past does not determine our future. Romans 8 1 says, There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Do you realize how many of you have a kid? How many of you have more than one? How many of you have more than you needed? <laughs> <laughs> They ain't going to do what you say. They've got to learn. They've got to grow. And you've got to let them. But our past does not determine. You are not destined for failure because you messed up previously. Praise God. Only Jesus Christ was the sinless one. Number two, obedience often requires a public confession. I told y'all about the night I was at an AA meeting. It was a CR, really. Same, different. And this guy walked in late. He said, what are we doing? And I just said, well, we're all telling our worst sins and it's your turn. <laughs> and the director said, Rick, don't say that. <laughs> But it was an intimate meeting where people were being honest. Hey, I'm Joe and I'm a drunk. I'm Bob, I'm an addict. I'm Sam, I'm, I, I have a problem with overeating. I mean, life is full of challenges and, and failures and, and struggles. But sometimes it requires a public confession. 1 John 1, 9 says... If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from how much unrighteousness? All. All. And I want to thank God that doesn't mean we have to stand up in church and tell every stupid thing we ever did. If we're going to do that, you first. Okay? <laughs> and number three. Faith is demonstrated. Faith that is demonstrated is your number. James 2.26 says, Show me your faith by your works. If you're trying to convince your family that you're different, you don't have to do it with your mouth. You do it with your actions. I am going to be different. I am a new person. I've been saved. Am I going to slip up? Probably. Am I going to mess up? Definitely. As long as you're going forward and you continue and you don't give up. God destroyed Jericho because of their unbelief. But he spared Rahab and her family because of her faith. Wow. I want to back up to those S words, Jackie. Because they, it's such a good, number one, we your sin. We'll just park it on the last one. Okay, she was a, a, a prostitute. And also she lied. Let me tell you, if, if, I'm, if I'm innocent and you're hiding me in the basement, would you just not tell them that I'm in the basement? <laughs> Let's, look, let's remember though, Rahab was not a believer at this time either. But she also knew one thing, i got to save my family. Let me tell you, if the authorities come to your door, and they are, it is not, what they're doing is not legal, what they're doing is not godly, you protect your family, folks. Yes, protect your family. Her scheme, she said, I don't want to be killed and I don't want my family to get killed. Her sacrifice, 
She was willing to hide those men to the point that she could have died. Her sign was the red cord. When I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Did she understand about Jesus then? No. But guess what? She was Jesus' great, great, great grandma. Wow. That's right, buddy. 